Let's take a look at how um, we can factor a matrix into a lower triangular and upper triangular matrix, which we'll refer to as L and U. So let's take a look at the matrix A that we uh, row reduced in the last video. And the whole idea is to try to take A and uh, find two matrices, again, that we'll call L and U, that we can multiply together to get A, and where L is upper or lower triangular and U is upper triangular. Now we might remember that when we row reduce A, uh, the final result is actually an upper triangular matrix. So let's assume that maybe that's the U we're looking for. And so that would be 2, 1, 3, and negative 3, or 0, negative 3, negative 3, and 0, 0, 2. So that was the uh, matrix we got when we row reduced A to upper triangular form. And so it turns out that um, is a good possibility for our U. Um, if we look at uh, what we need in order to get A, we can see that if we, um, our first row of L, we're missing one piece, but if that number happened to be one, then when we take that row and multiply it by the um, columns of U, we actually get that first row of A, the two, one, three. So that value turns out to be one. And um, it ends up that actually all the diagonal values in L will be ones. Um, the other values in L, I'm just going to tell you what they are for now, and then we'll see where they come from. So um, the values in L here would be 2 and negative 1 and negative 2. So you could perform this multiplication yourself. I'm not going to um, waste our time doing that. But if you multiply this L times U, you will, in fact, get the matrix A. So we know how to get U. Uh, U is obtained through row reduction. And it turns out that um, for L, the diagonal of L, the way we're going to do this, the diagonal will always be ones. Um, and then the only question is, where do the other three entries come from? And the other three entries um, actually show up in the process of, of row reducing A. So all we have to do is pay careful attention when we're doing that row reduction, um, and we can see where those values come from. So let's, let's go back and take a look at our row reduction. And let me just write in here to, rem to remind us that L looked like this. Uh, we have 1, 0, 0. Um, oh, darn, I already forgot the values. Looks like 2, 1, 0. And then we have negative 1, negative 2, and 1. So again, the question is, where are those numbers in the lower left corner of L coming from? And if we look carefully, um, this guy, I'm going to circle this 2 in blue. It's in the same spot as this 4 up here. And if we look um, at the procedure for obtaining a 0 where the 4 is, what we can see is that our multiplier, in that case, was 4 divided by 2, or 2. Similarly, when we're trying to obtain the 1 in the lower left corner, which I've I'm going to circle in red, okay? So it's, of course, related to the two, the negative two in the original matrix. Um, if we look carefully, we can see that that negative one is actually the multiplier that's used to obtain a zero in that lower left corner. So it looks like um, we can just take our multipliers from our row reduction process and and put the, the multiplier that's used to obtain a zero in a particular spot, we put that multiplier in that spot in the lower triangular matrix. Um, let's take a look at the, the last value, which we haven't gotten to yet, which is on the next slide. Okay. And again, let me write down our L. So the L was 1, 0, 0, uh, 2, 1, 0, and negative 1, negative 2, 1. Okay. And we can see now it was this particular entry that we're interested in right here now. And that negative 2 happens to be the same as 6 over negative 3, which is our multiplier 
that's used in order to obtain uh, the zero in the uh, third row of the second column. Um, so that's where the, the entries from the, um, the lower triangular matrix L come from. It's fairly simple. Uh, as long as we use that mechanical process where we get each new row by um, subtracting its previous version, or so, I'm sorry, taking its previous version and subtracting some multiple of another row, um, as long as we use subtraction every time, then our multiples give us the entries in the lower part of our lower triangular matrix.